Today I'm going to bring you five things you can do to bring your handicap down this year. So what do I mean by no flag golf? Well, quite simply it means when you've got your approach shots or your par threes, play it like there was no flag there. And all your goal was is to get the ball anywhere on the green. And if the game was to, if you got the ball on a green, you walked away with a, a par, well, no one would aim at a, a left side or right side. Every single person, if you was to guarantee walk away with a par, if you just got a ball on a green, would go bang in the middle. And why it's so important to just aim for the middle is us mortal golfers and us average and high handicap golfers have a deviation pattern. If we were to hit 20 balls at this flag, all of us would have a deviation of probably, hopefully, slightly bigger than the size of that green over there. So by aiming in the middle, you're giving yourself room left of your deviation pattern and right of your deviation pattern. Whereas if you aimed for the left side, let's say that flag was on the left, well, if you're deviation then circle moves slightly left your bad shot's going to end up over there by the tee somewhere so i've taken three shots at that and i've got two on the green and one that hit this left side and has bounced off left now two out of three ain't bad for someone like me and so if you're able to get balls on the green rather than having to chip on all the time, well, quite simply, you're going to get more pars and less bogeys or worse. Parts. So tip number two is understand your strokes lost versus strokes gained. And what I mean by that, if you don't understand this, is Every golfer is very, very different. And if you compare one 15 handicapper, for example, to another, they will have very, very different levels of abilities, likely in different areas of their golf game. So one 15 handicapper might drive at 350 yards, but they can't putt and their short game's horrendous. And you then may have another 15 handicapper who short game and putting's really, really, really strong, but they're driving and off a tee, they're picking up loads of penalties or they just can't hit drivers, so they're much shorter. And, and so a really important element is that massively helped me, I got stuck at around 18 handicap and it was, I started tracking my strokes lost versus strokes gained to someone of my handicap. Now, personally, I use Arcos sensors, which I'll, I'll come into in a minute. Freewood is definitely not my favourite club in the bag, but we're definitely up there close. So data that's really important to understand is how many putts are you having in a round? How many up and downs are you getting in a round? How many penalties are you having in off the tee? How many fairways have you hit? How many greens and regulations have you hit? These are really important pieces of data to understand and just understand your own game because then it can really give you something to focus on. I will show you off the course a really simple way if you don't want to invest money into the, to the Arcos sensors which tracks all of your data throughout the playing golf, then I'll show you a really, really simple and easy way to track some of this key information, this key data, just using a scorecard.
Oh, sit, 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 sit. Not bad. So when I realized that I was having 40 putts per round, zero up and downs, and a lower handicapper was were having 36, 38 putts per round, it really made me realize that I could quickly, I could quickly gain five, six strokes, which is a lot in a round of golf, just by improving putting. For the birdie. Happy learn how to putt. Uh-oh. Play your percentage shot. And that's really important. Play your percentage shot. Imagine that you've got this here. You've got wind behind, the flag's at the back. We've got a massive lake at the bottom. We're at 200 yards at least to the front edge of that green. It all slopes down. You've got bunker right, bunkers left. You've got a good scorecard going. You're playing well. And you're thinking, you know what? If I really smash this freeward here, I could get it there. I could be on for a birdie. But this is the hardest hole on the course. And by percentage shot, it really is that. What percentage of shots, if you were to hit 10 of these into that green, how many would get there? And how many would you duff left, duff right, put in the lake? And so I used to do this all the time. I'd get here and I'd get my free wood out and knowing I have to hit it hard, I'd swing too hard. I wouldn't have a smooth swing. I'd end up topping it or smashing it into the water, hitting it out of bounds or just putting myself in more trouble. I get really frustrated and, and, and through frustration, I just end up walking away through a, with a double, triple bogey, which then ends up following me around the entire round of golf. And what could have been a really nice scorecard turns into a disaster because of one hole. Don't chase the pars and the birdies necessarily all the time. Lay up down there, just get on that ridge. Yep, very nice. Caught that very poorly. We're a little bit short, unfortunately, we we pitched here, which is a bit unlucky because if we pitch about three foot forward, we'd have a slightly easier putt. I just imagine hitting it. And you know what? That's not bad there. If you really want to start bringing your handicap down this year, a big focus of your game should be within your scoring clubs, which are your wedges. You know, these are the ones, these are your strikers, yeah? Your putter and your, your three wedges, they're your forwards, if you were to think of football. They're gonna get you the goals. And these are the ones that you really, really need to train and nurture and really understand their different attributes. What you don't want to do is just look at yardage and go, okay, I'll grab that club. You need to assess what you're looking to do with your, with your short game. And this is something that you're going to have to take away from the course and really practice and really work on. Obviously you need to go with what you, what you feel most comfortable with. Now, personally, in this scenario, I'm going to take a 54 degree. I could take 58. It's gonna give me a little bit more roll than a 58. The 58 is just gonna probably just stop. And I know that there's loads of room, so much more room than it looks at that flag. Not 
not bad at all. In a round of golf, how many greens and regulation do you think a pro golfer would hit on average? According to Arcos, hits on average 56% of greens in reg. So they're probably averaging just over half. So let's say 10 greens in reg, which then means that they're relying on short game around the green to pick up those pars. So if you're a 20 handicapper, how many greens do you think you're hitting in a round of golf? It's more likely you're hitting somewhere around 28%. Oh, it just moved on me. Guys, I'm a 12 handicapper, I'm not a pro golfer. But what I'm telling you is things that have really helped me last year improve in a lot of areas of my golf game. so high so I've got a couple of choices here I can take a 58 and just flight one there which is an option like so the bump and run shot Just got snagged up there in that little fringe, as you could see. I've got a pitching wedge. Could also use something maybe like a 50 degree, just something that's just got a little bit of loft that's going to get you through this rough and stop. That might have gone in. And so, with short game, is understanding what different clubs are going to give you and maybe start off with just practicing with three different ones so 58 degrees going to go high and stop quickly an eight iron or a seven iron or something of that sort is just kind of going to get through that little bit of rough in that first couple of feet and then just roll almost like a putter and then you've got your pitch and wedge it's going to be very very similar pitch and wedge 50 degree where it's just going to have that little bit more of a bounce to get through a little bit of extra rough to, and, and then roll a little bit less than that eight iron, like again, like a putter. And so it's really just mastering different shots around the green that's gonna really help bring your scores down. So tip number five, if you're really serious about getting down this year, then my final tip for you really is honestly, play golf by yourself. Not all the time, obviously. It's a, it's a good, you know, everybody loves the social element of golf, but there really is nothing like playing golf on your own. It's, it's so much more relaxing. There's no pressure. You can really work on things. You know, you can take a couple of balls as long as you're not obviously causing slow play and just try different things out, work on different short game shots like you've seen I've done today, which are things I wouldn't have been able to do if I were playing with other people. I didn't expect you to stop as quick as you did. A little thing that I do to work on short game is if I was to hit the green, and let's say I've hit the green and I'm not too close, I might just take myself off. What I, a game I like to play is, if I hit a really nice approach shot, then I'll give myself a little easier shot for a chip. If I hit a bad approach shot, then I give myself a, a harder chip. So if I, in this instance, hit, you know, I probably would say I hit a 
a medium approach shot from where I was, so I'd give myself a sort of medium chip. So I might just sort of come down here, give myself a shot, and obviously you're still putting in a, you're still doing a scorecard. You're just making it slightly harder for yourself. So just make sure you're working on that short game. So here I've gonna, I've got a medium, a medium chip here. Oh my lord. Somebody's closer. Whereas had I had a a better approach shot, I might just give myself a slightly easier chip shot. Oh. Like so, just to really work on that short game doing that game there you might want to go through 18 holes of golf and every time you hit a green you take yourself off the green and rely on short game throughout that 18 holes to to make your pars and make your birdies and, and that you know just doing that once a month is going to really really help your short game on the golf course